Recently, I uploaded a video about implementing the echo command from scratch in C. And today we are going to extend this echo command with a few flags. So if you haven't checked out the first video of this kind of mini series, feel free to do so now. Anyway, let's just get started. Okay, so first let's just look at this documentation right here. And as we can see in this documentation, we can support three flags. Now, obviously this can vary significantly based on your operating system, but we will use this as a guideline right here. The first one, which is quite easy to implement is the dash N flag. So we are going to focus on that flag first, and then we are going to implement the dash E flag, which seems a bit harder, but we will still implement this one. Clearly, we are not going to support all the sequences listed right here, but feel free to implement the others as well if you want to. Okay, what we're going to do first is we are going to get rid of the magic numbers. So I actually use here one as a file descriptor in the right system calls, and then we also have the zero right here. Now, instead of using zero, we can just use exit success right here, and this macro comes from the standard library. So we can include this one right here. And if we're going to look at this macro, we basically see that it just is zero basically, right? So this macro is defined right here. And then we can also get rid of these ones for the file descriptor. And we can just use the macro std out file no, which is defined in this header file. And here we can actually see that this is the standard output file descriptor and it is just one. So we can just replace the first ones, obviously not the bytes we actually want to write with this macro right here. So then in the end, we just get rid of the magic numbers. Okay, but let's just first focus on basically processing the flags of our program. So what we will have to do first before we basically do anything, we have to pass the command line flags. And clearly these options always start with a dash. What we can say is we can just use i is less than arc c. So while i is less than arc c and we have to define i up here and we define i up here because we are going to use this i later on basically after passing the command line arguments this is going to be quite important and we clearly start at one because arc v zero so basically this right here is just a program name and we clearly want to skip this one okay with that in mind we now iterate over all the other arguments of our program. But what we are also going to check is argvi and then zero is equal to a dash. And we are also going to check if basically i zero is not equal to this weird character right here. So what is actually going on? So as I said before, what we're going to try right here is we are going to pass the command line flags and these options start with the dash and we are going to continue while we have arguments and the current argument starts with a dash. This backslash zero right here just represents the null terminator, which is pretty much just a special character that marks the end of every C string. Hopefully you know what I really mean in a minute right here, but what we can then say is we can define a pointer P, which is a character, and this will be argv at i plus one. Right, and now this character pointer p just points to the first character after the dash. And we are using a pointer right here to just walk through the characters of a specific string. And using a pointer just lets us efficiently move through the string character by character with p++ rather than constantly indexing into the array. Hopefully this kind of makes sense. And then what we're going to do is we are going to define a valid flag, which we are going to set initially to one. Now this is just going to track if all the characters in this flag group are valid. And then we do have another while loop inside of our while loop, which will just process each character in the flag group. So we can say pointer p and valid flag. So what I mean by a flag group is pretty simple because we could also say dash n e, right? And right here, this would just process n first and then e individually. Okay, now in the end of this second or nested while loop, what we can say is just p++. Now this just moves to the next character in the flag group. And then we can create a switch right here on the pointer p. Let me quickly get out of this nested loop right here. And then what we can do is just finish the first first loop and then we can focus on the nested loop. What we're going to check is if it's not a valid flag, then we are just going to break right here, right? So if we encounter pretty much an invalid flag, we are going to stop passing the flags. This just pretty much means that the current argument isn't a flag. So we treat it as a kind of text. And then what we're going to do is we are going to move to the next argument right here. 
Okay, let's just get back to the switch right here. And now we're going to pass the flags and set the state we want. So what we can say is in the case of an N flag, remember when specifying this dash N flag, this just pretty much means that we suppress the trailing new line. And what we can say is pretty much we can define up here an N flag and we can initially set this to one. Again, this just controls the new line output and one just means that we want a new line and zero just means that we do not want a new line in the end. Okay, and then whenever we specify this dash n flag, what we can say is just n flag is equal to zero, right? And then we just break and then we can handle the other cases as well. So what we can say is case e, so lowercase e in this case. And this is pretty much the e flag, which just enables the interpretation of back slash escapes. So what we can say is e flag, and then we are going to set this to one. Obviously, we are going to define this e flag right here as well, which we are going to set initially to zero. Right, so one just means that we are going to kind of control the escape sequence processing and zero just means that we do not want any escape sequence processing in here. Okay, and then don't forget the break and then we are going to handle the upper case E as well. And here we are going to set the E flag to zero and then we're going to set break again. Now this dash uppercase E just means that we are going to explicitly disable the escape sequence interpretation. This is pretty much the default, but it just allows overriding the previous dash E as well. And then in the case of any other flag, what we're going to do is break and then we're going to set the valid flag to zero, right? So right here we do have an unknown flag character. So we want to stop processing the flags. Okay, and this was basically it with our kind of command line or flag passing functionality. So I would say let's just make use of the N flag first because I think it's quite easy. And as you can remember right here, we always add a trailing new line right here with this right system call. And what we can say here is we can just create an if condition and if the N flag is basically one or in a true state, then we can write this system call right here, right? So this just adds the trailing new line unless dash N flag was specified. And then what we can also say is just size T written. So we're actually going to check if something goes wrong with the system call. I've actually explained this in the first video, but now we're actually going to handle this. And if written is equal to minus one, then we can just return the exit failure. Right, an exit failure is just another macro, which is just one. All right, and this is the implementation of our N flag. Quite cool, quite simple. Now let's just get a bit more complicated because we also need to handle the E flag here. But before we continue with that, thank you so much, Savala, for sponsoring this video. Savala is the true all in one platform as a service that allows you to deploy apps, databases, and static sites without dealing with complex infrastructure. The best part is that there are no annoying artificial limits, so no restrictions on parallel builds, no caps on team members. And of course, you only pay for what you use. They run on Google Kubernetes engines across 25 regions with Cloudflare's global network for speed and reliability. Additionally, they provide support from real human developers who understand your problems, which can be incredibly helpful. Furthermore, the developer experience is just seamless. You can push to Git, receive automatic builds, enjoy instant previews, and benefit from one-click templates. Whether you are building the next big app or just want reliable hosting for your site projects, Savala handles it all and scales with you. They are offering new users $50 in free credits to get started, so feel free to check out the link in the description. Again, thank you so much to Savala for sponsoring this video. Now, let's just get back to the code. So let's just get back to this for loop. And right here, we do keep track of the I, right? And we are incrementing this I every single time we've processed a valid flag group as an argument. And now we do not really need to kind of redefine this i and what we can simply say is just this here so we're just going to say i is less than arc c and then i plus plus right this just pretty much means that we are going to loop through the rest of the arguments so in theory the actual text we want to write and what we can say is just we are going to define the string right here 
and then we're going to say arc v at i and then we also need the length which is str length and then string right nothing really new so far we've just defined these two variables up here okay what we then have is we are going to check if the e flag is defined and right here we are going to call a function we will define in a minute however with the rest of the code we can now refactor these two write system calls we can just say size t and then we could say bytes written right here and then it will write and we will use the string and for string length we will actually use length right here now if the bytes written is equal to minus one we are just going to return exit failure immediately right here and what is important to know is we are going to modify the string and the length right here with this function call in this if condition and that's why we are going to specify the string and length because in the end now this length may represent now the processed length of the string and this string now may represent the processed string as well this is really important to highlight here okay and then we can just add a space between the arguments but obviously not after the last argument and what we can say here quite simple we are just going to define the space written right here and then we are going to do the save check here again if it's minus one we're just going to return the exit failure macro right here okay and let's just get back to the heart of the e flag what we're going to call is we are going to call a function which we will call process escape sequences and we are going to pass in the string and then the memory address of length right and again this process escape sequences function may modify the string and length variables all right now with that in mind let's just define this function up here and we are going to call this again process escape sequences and then we also have a pointer to a length integer again this character pointer string in c basically just kind of means that we are going to pass in a string right here and we are not copying anything we are just passing the memory address where the string starts and then the int pointer length is just a pointer to an integer and this allows the function to modify the original length variable in the calling code if we would use the int length instead we will just get a copy of the length value, which we do not want. Okay, and what we're going to have here is just a two pointers technique here to modify the string in place efficiently. And clearly for two pointers, we need two pointers. So what we're going to have is just an integer i is equal to zero. And this integer i is equal to zero just tracks the reading position. And then we also have a pointer which tracks the writing position, which we will call j is equal to zero. So right here, j just defines where to place the processed characters in the resulting string. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we are going to loop through each character in the input string so we just say i remember this is the reading position i is less than the pointer length right this pointer length just pretty much means that we are going to dereference the pointer so we are going to the memory address and get or possibly set the value stored there in this specific case we are only getting the value from the memory address and we are not setting anything what we're going to then do is we are going to check if the current character is a backslash and if there is a next character right remember we are going to process the escape sequences right here so what we can say is if the string at the position i is equal to a backslash character and i plus one is still less than the point of length right this whole check just overall prevents a buffer overflow when checking the escape sequence which is really important then what we can do is we can just define the escape character right here now this will just store the actual character to output and then we also have the advanced integer right here which we are going to initialize with two and this just means how many positions we want to advance and by default we are just going to skip the backslash and the next character which results by default to two characters and therefore we initialize advance with two here then what we're going to do is we're going to define another switch right here and we are going to this time switch on this string i plus one right and right here this switch just means that we are going to determine what the escape sequence pretty much represents and remember we are still at the backslash so we need to look up the next character and this is why we use i plus one in case if it is an n we are just going to set the escape char to a backslash n 
and then we're going to set break and we're going to do the same thing with t here as well and with r and r is pretty much just the carriage return and then we could also have the case where we do have another backslash and we also need to escape this one and then we also have the default case now this just what we did here is we are going to kind of handle or process all the escape sequences and by default we are just going to break set advance to zero and then we're going to say str at j so the writing position plus plus is equal to str at i plus plus right this looks kind of strange so what the heck is going on now what this line of code just means is if it's not a recognized escape sequence we are going to treat the backslash literally so we are going to copy the backslash as is and don't advance extra positions and by setting advance equal to zero we do not really skip the next character since it's not part of the escape okay so after the switch if the advance is a true value so if advance so basically if we found a valid escape sequence we want to write the interpreted character what we can say is str at j plus plus so the writing position is equal to the escape chart so we're going to place the interpreted character at the right position and then we're going to skip both the backslash and the escape character so we're just going to say i plus equals to advance we are not done yet with this kind of while loop right here because we still need to process the regular character if we need it so what we can say right here is just else right this just pretty much means that it is a regular character and right here we are just going to copy it from the read position to the right position so we're going to say str j plus plus is equal to str i plus plus and then last but not least we are going to basically reset or set the length variable right here so we are going to dereference the length pointer and then we're going to set it to j here we are just going to update the length to pretty much reflect the new string length after processing and then i think it's quite clear that if we're going to pretty much escape the sequences we are going to make the string shorter and therefore we need to set or kind of update the pointer to length or the new length to j. Okay, let me quickly give you a walkthrough of this algorithm again. Let's just take the example of having something like hello world, right? So we do have hello and then backslash n world. So the first thing what is going to happen is it's going to copy the word hello or h-e-l-l-o to the already existing string zone. Nothing new really changes here. However, now we encounter the backslash. And right here when i encounters a backslash followed by n, the function just recognizes this as an escape sequence. And instead of just copying the two characters, so backslash and n, it just writes a single new line character at position j and then advances i by two. Because remember, we've processed backslash and n, which results in two characters. And this then just causes j to lag behind i, compacting the string. And then last but not least, the final length stored in pointer len, so the pointer length dereference the pointer equals to j, just reflects the shorter process string. Since again, escape sequences just reduce the character count. Now there is just one error because I forgot this semicolon right here. And now we are actually done. So let's just check out the functionality. Okay, what we're going to check out first is just a plain string. So let's just compile and run this program. And what we'll actually see is just a simple hello world. Now let's just add a backslash n right here. And what we see is because this is treated as a normal string, it just kind of echoes this string, which we obviously want. What we can say to suppress the new line in the end is we can just say dash n, right? And this basically just shows that we've kind of suppressed the new line character in the end, which is quite cool. And what we can now say, because we want to kind of process this escape sequence, we can say ne for instance, right? And ne would result in hello. Then we would process the new line character, which is dash n or this specific escape sequence, and then we would just print world again, and then we suppress the new line. We could also do the same thing, obviously, with dash n and then dash e again. This would result in the same thing. And then what we could also do is just dash e and uppercase e, and this would basically mean that it would just ignore the escape sequences, and it would just print the whole string right here. Now, certainly you can enhance the entire code to support more sequences, but that should be enough for now. 
but hopefully you've learned a few things in this video. Now if you are curious about the weirdness of the cons keyword in C++, feel free to check out this video right here. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, have a lovely day and bye bye.